So I was preparing some backs of these masks and I thought, you know, kind of what I'm doing here would look kind of fun on the front. So I'm gonna show you guys what I'm doing. Howdy, howdy, this is Claire Lawrence. Okay, I've already done a series of masks before where I've used alcohol ink and I've used resin. Um, I was taking one of the pieces that I did alcohol ink for and was painting the underside of it so it would, it would look nice to, you know, whoever the end client was or a buyer that purchased it. And I thought the combination turned out so nicely, I thought I would do it intentionally on this guy on the front. I'll probably also do it on the back as well, but I thought that would be great as a base and maybe do something over top of it to bring it up a notch. So what I'm using here is, I'm just using an acrylic paint, and these are acrylic paints I've had a long time. I've used them on a cloth before. I used to use them when I first started with resin to color my resin, but it's an acrylic based paint, uh, Lumiere by Jacquard, and the, let's see, you can probably see it from the top. They have a pearlescent type of quality to them. And really, really pretty, very pigmented, uh, just overall real nice paint. And I've used them also on wood as well. But what I'll do is whenever I'm using any kind of, any kind of uh, acrylic paint, just like you see with most artists where they create a palette, um, I'll put out some from the bottle onto my palette. And the reason for that is since I'm going to be blending one color to another color, I'm not affecting this jar of paint and dirtying it up with another color. Um, as you can see here, just by me dipping in with brushes uh, or the brush into different colors and such, you get an area here where they start blending together. The, uh, my jar stay nice and pure. Okay, so let's get started. Um, let's see, I'm wondering what would be the best way to do this. I think I'm just gonna get started with just picking up some color. So I've got one of the colors here is a halo blue gold. Um, oh, and at the end of the video, I'll put uh, a picture of the um, the colors I use. So if you're ever wondering, it's like, oh, I must have that color for this project or that project, you can always refer back to the photo to um, get the color names and even the product name, that kind of deal. So this is probably the exception to the rule because I usually say I get all my colors from um, Artists Till Death, but they don't sell acrylic paints. So I know you can get them, I believe, off of Blix uh, is one place. You might even be able to get it from like Jerry's Artorama. So all I'm doing here is I laid in some of the, uh, the blue green or the halo blue green and I'm adding some purple to the end of this. And then I'm just going to work it in. And just kind of blend it. Move the purple around in this zone for a little bit. So I've got a little bit of green on my brush. So it's not a pure brush at all. I'm using the same brush. And then I just slowly bring in the purple into the green area. And then bring it back out. Bring that. And I might even go and add a little bit more of the the green in there and just kind of work these two colors together. In fact, I think I might take this green all the way to the top. But what I ended up with was a blend that kind of looks like, I guess you can call it like a peacock blend. It was very pretty. So, didn't seem to matter what order I did these colors with, just as long as, I think the critical color was the, um, the blue green or the green gold color and then um, a violet made it uh, very peacocky like so I don't want to say no rhyme or reason but I definitely want to say that whatever color you end up in 
make sure you kind of blend it into the color next to it. So even if it goes into an area here that's, that's dry, just work it in enough so that you don't have a hard line of where one color started and one color stopped. Bring in a little bit of this lighter blue here. Work that in. As you can tell by my fingers, I've been messing around with this stuff for a little bit. It's fun. And acrylic paints, uh, these, let me back up a little bit. So these masks are kind of like compressed paper. Uh, it seems like there's some kind of plastic in them to hold its shape a little bit better. Uh, but you will get some creases with these guys. And uh, so you'll have to push the paint into the creases to kind of eliminate that. And also, you can see by if I, you brush really, really lightly, you can see a texture. So by pushing the uh, paint in, you can eliminate that texture look. Oh, I hope disguise it. All right, I'll get some more purple in here. I hope I'm staying on camera. What I've got here, and I'm gonna keep on moving around and dancing everywhere, is I've got a lot of paint on my brush. I can feel it when I'm painting with it. So I wanna to move to an area that doesn't have color. So that way when I start blending it into the green, there'll, there'll be some green left over. Cause if I went over to here and I still have a brush full of paint, it'll just end up covering up all your green. And so by kind of spreading out the purple a bit, allows me to get that color in there. And so since this whole area here, for example, is uh, purple, I can just pick up a little bit of blue and bring it into here on top of it and just kind of blend it in. And you'll still get that purple undertone, but it'll look a little bit more interesting. I'll pick a little bit of dark, darker blue here. So that way there's blends everywhere. So I'm bringing some of that green over here. That's gonna keep on working it back and forth, try and blend it in. I pick up a little bit more green to Get that nice. Let's see. All right, so I've got a green, a blue, and it goes over to a green again here. So I'm thinking about introducing a little bit of purple just here, just to kind of break it up a little bit. Because I'm not exactly being symmetrical. All right, I think I grabbed a little bit too much purple, but that's all right. I just work that in for now. Right now, I'm kind of dry brush blending it where it's feathering it out. I don't know if that's a thing, but it's a thing right now. Actually, I kind of like that. Maybe a tiny bit more blue over here. Yeah, that's nice. I like that. All right, let me bring in. All right, so this is straight on here. So you can see how it blends really, really well from one color to the next. Picking up little bits of green, little blue, goes into a purple. 
So very simple and has a nice pearlescence to it. It's very, very pretty. And do I need to seal this up before I resin it? Nope, because the acrylic paint by itself is go already gonna be a sealer. So I just gotta let that dry real well and do up some uh, resin. But uh, meantime, I'll probably paint the underside just so that the outside will be, oh, well, everything will be all nice and cleaned up. I'm already thinking ahead about what, what I'm gonna do. It's like, how am I gonna paint the underside? I think I might do the underside just a solid color. So that way the front has all the pizzazz. Yeah. So I'm gonna pause this for now, just so this can dry and paint the backside. Probably a blue. And then um, probably do this tomorrow morning where I go and hit this with some resin and we'll bring this up a notch. Later. All right, this guy's ready for the next step. We've got some resin mixed up. Um, I've got some white and some interference colors mixed up. Well, one interference and one chameleon. And I'm going to tap into that. But the first thing I need to do is put a skin coat on everything. And I found by accident with doing another one that... You can put even a mega skin coat on the back side and it'll just give it a shinier impression so that way when I'm handling this and I'm getting my fingers because I'll get resin on my fingers here but uh, if I get my finger impressions on the back side it won't show up as bad if I put a very very thin and I mean mega thin coat of resin on here I don't know what you want to call it. And it'll probably protect the paint too. So, normally on a canvas, if you did something this thin, it would uh, have pits and stuff. So, but because of the texture on this, it probably won't leave any pits. I'm hoping. Nope, oh, I had too, too much right there. I don't know. Let's see if I can wipe some of that off. Okay. I just got enough there. And now I can put it more concentrated on the front. So I'm still trying to get a skin coat. It's going to appear a little bit thicker on the top, mainly because the texture isn't as severe on the top. So it'll give a shinier smoother, glossier finish kind of thing. And I've got some uh, white mixed up. I might see if I can play with doing a kind of a torch and tilt and see what happens. I'm kind of curious and so we're going to experiment a little bit. could all run off I don't know but I think the white even going thin over this um, peacock uh, painting will be really really pretty still because there'll be some areas where the painting will still kind of peekaboo through the resin all right is everything covered almost Sorry about my hands there. All right, now I'm gonna change my gloves cause mucho on the messy side. I wanna be able to handle it, but yet also not worry about constantly transferring everything everywhere. Oops, I don't have three sets of hands. I'm very thankful that I was able to get a hold of some gloves, but I have to admit, I don't know what's going on with these gloves, but I sweat like the dickens in them. <laughs> uh, 
Okay. So what I want to do with my interference is I just want to drizzle it over occasionally. Just so it plays with a little bit of light. And then I've got one over here. Or I'm sorry, that, yeah, that was interference before. And then this one is grumpy, which is a chameleon. Oops. All right, I'm gonna leave that be. That's enough. All right, let's see, where are you on the camera? Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and put a line of white here and lift it up and torch it and see if I can encourage it to go down. And it'll probably move around the shape is what I'm hoping for. I don't know if it'll come down here or not, but that's the theory. So let's try, right? Sometimes you just got to try and it's either gonna be like a, no, don't do that, or, ooh, cool. I have to try that. We've got some dry spots there. The only downside about doing a skin coat is you can get some dry spots. All right, so I'm gonna literally put white right on the edge here. I just gotta do this this way, I think. I'll clean up the back. Usually when resin goes thinner, meaning a color, sometimes you can get cells just from it going thinner. So that's kind of what I'm hoping when it runs across it, that that will happen. So let's see. All right, let me get to this. And the white that I'm using is just a titanium white from uh, Just Resin. I'm going to tilt that up with the nose. Of course, I also got to be careful. And it's not going to do it. Okay. And we're not going to get cells, but we'll definitely get some runoff. Oh, we got a little bit of cells. Okay, that still looks really cool, though. All right. I'm gonna put a little bit more right here, kind of in the crown area. Hello. Hey. Yeah, I got a video going. Hey. Everybody say hi to Mike. <laughs> trying to get to drip down that way. So what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is just be sneaky and see if I can encourage it to there we go. All right. I think that'll do. And I'm going to put this off to the side. And let it cure. Because I don't want to mess with it much more than I already am. Or as I mess with it again. I think I just burned my parchment paper. <laughs> that didn't smell good. Let's see. Am I lying? Yes, I'm lying. Okay.
Okay. Yes. I'm going to move that to a fresh spot where it's not sitting and drips so badly. And I'll see you tomorrow. Later. Okay. So this guy has had a chance to dry. And I'm holding it carefully only because my fingers are a little bit on the messy side. But if you've noticed, there's some areas there that do not look like they got full coverage. And I kind of expected that because it was a three-dimensional object. So what I'm going to do here is I've got some shimmery kind of colors to play with. And I've also got some whites. So I thought I would put another layer of clear on this. A little bit of the shimmery colors and then some more white and do the same thing I did before with the white and see what happens and just let that you know let that be what it's gonna be did I really say that out loud I sure did <laughs> so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna start putting this second coat on I just put a second coat on another mask and it sure is a lot easier when the first coats already there because it's already like shiny and it's got a surface to it and so it collides on a little bit easier than um, putting it on like paper or something like that where you really have to push it in so this process goes a lot faster because of that sure I'm in the camera here because I got gooey fingers Not like I can really grab my camera very well right now or my phone I should say and my resin has been sitting here for a bit I've been working on some projects so I'm getting close to the end of my working time and so it's a lot thicker than it was the first time I did it and hopefully that will help as far as it's staying on the mask, I am not in camera crap. All right, I'm going to move this over see if this will help. That works a little easier. So I'm really liking the way these kind of move and trickle down. I think that's super cool. And if you feel like you got too much on, just brush it off or relocate it to another area. Like I just did before, I put too big of a blob in this zone, so I scooped it up and put it over here. That way I'm not fighting it. All right, I think everything has a coat. Ah, messy fingers. Now, when I heat this up right in this zone here and it starts going down, it's gonna thin out the resin, which is probably one, some of the reasons why it gave some what looks like dry spots where it got super super thin and so I know that going into this um, and that's another reason why I wanted to do a second coat is so that eventually this whole thing will get covered all right I'll wipe off my hands a little bit so it's not too bad okay so what I've got here is that is not the one. I've got green apple. Is that it? Grid. <laughs> okay. I've got green apple, which is a chameleon, and it's a blue green shift. I'm just going to place 
a thin ribbon right along the edge here and it's going to glide down with the white when I apply the white to it. And then a little bit later on, I'll come back in here and move this mask from one area to the other because it'll drip quite a bit. Let's see. Get this out of the way. There's my white. I'm not trying to do exactly a torch and tilt. But it's basically the same kind of same kind of technique. You know what? I'm just gonna go edge to edge. That way got some consistency going on here. Alright, clean off the pause so I'm not getting my torch all goopy. Alright. Just to encourage it to keep on flowing straight down. Yeah, that's, we're going to leave it right there. All right, let me bring you in for a close-up after I get rid of my gloves. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not thinking of my camera with those gloves. Mm -mm. Are you guys ready? Zoom me in. Sorry, it seems abrupt. Can you see the little shift underneath? And it slid down with the white. Ooh, that looks super cool. Nice. That's going to leave a really nice effect on this mask. And I'm not even worried about the texture. Just let it be where it's going to be. All right. Let's let this guy cure up. And we'll check it out later. Like I said, um, let me zoom out a little bit. You can see some of the puddle that's accumulating right there. So in a couple hours, I'll pick it up and move it. So that way, it'll drip in a fresh spot. And it won't accumulate so much of a thick area there that's really accumulating on this side here and i'm gonna have to do some cutting and probably a little bit of uh, tweaking maybe with uh, some sandpaper so that way it's not a rough spot if somebody decided to like wear the mask but hopefully some of these cells stay because i'm really digging if anything just the look of the texture so cross your fingers guys all right, here's the next day on this piece. I'm happy with it. Got a little bit of cleaning up to do. This is the stuff I was talking about where it gives a little flat end that I'll need to trim off and sand. But otherwise, it's ready to go. All right, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, but definitely hit the bell to get notified next time I put a video up. Check the links in the description below for my Etsy store as well as any supplies I use. And all the colors I use, uh, I get from Artists Till Death, and they're in there too. There you go.